Welcome to part two of my video on the passages and openings of the skull, and these include the foramina, fissures, canals, grooves, and others. Okay, so let's jump straight in. So now we're going to be looking at the posterior view, and um, the first thing we see are the parietal foramen, and they're these little holes here that are located on um, the parietal bone, so there's one on each parietal bone. Now, these can sometimes be absent, so some people sometimes don't have them, but most of the time they're there. They um, transmit the emissary veins that drain to the superior sagittal sinus, and they also occasionally carry a branch of the occipital artery, but not always. Next, we have the mastoid foramen, and the mastoid foramen are located here. They're quite hard to see. Maybe if I erase this, can you see just a little like dot here? There is the mastoid foramen just located there. Um, and this mastoid foramen is, it's located on the mastoid process of the temporal bone. So this here would be the temporal bone. And this part, this, this thing that sticks out on the mastoid process, so the part that sticks out is the mastoid process, and this is located on the mastoid process. So it's also very variable in size, number, and position. So it can be in a slightly different place. There could be like three or four or maybe even just one of them and the position. So they might just be like higher up or more lateral, so it means more to the side. But they're most commonly found near the back margin, which is this part. So this would be the front margin. This would be the front margin. This would be the back margin. And um, so it's found near the, the back margin of the mastoid process. And it carries emissary veins, emissary veins that connect to the sigmoid sinus. It also carries a small dural branch of the occipital artery. So it carries also a small dural branch of the occipital artery. And um, dural just is just like the tough outermost membrane that envelops the brain and the spinal cord. So it just, yeah, like a tough branch of the occipital artery. Okay, next we have the incisive foramen. The incisive or incisal foramen, written here, is right here. So... It's along this line here, and the incisive foramen is just this dot that we can see. And it's it's also called the anterior palatine foramen. So it's also called the anterior palatine foramen, and it transmits the greater palatine artery and vein from the oral to the nasal cavity. So it so the greater palatine artery and vein travel from the oral cavity to the nasal cavity through the the incisive foramen and also it carries the um, nasopalatine vein in the opposite direction so this the greater palatine artery and vein they go from the oral to the nasal cavity whereas the nasopalatine vein goes from the nasal to the oral so they just go in opposite directions okay Next, we have the mandibular foramen, and this is what we can see here and here. It's quite large. You can literally see the indent. The mandibular foramen is really um, important. It's located on the ramus of the mandible. So this, this is the mandible, as we know, and this part here would be the ramus of the mandible. And then we have the body of the mandible. So this is the ramus of the mandible, and it's located on the ramus. And um, it transmits the inferior alveolar nerve, which is a branch of the posterior division, so the back division of the mandibular division of the trigeminal. So mandibular division just means it will be the mandibular part, so wherever it travels through the mandible, of the trigeminal nerve. So the posterior, which is this surface here, the... Um, Anterior surface would be the front, so what we can see, like, if you look at a skull from the front, it kind of looks like, oh, I, that was that's a really bad drawing, but it kind of looks like that, doesn't it, with the eyes, and oh, that looks like a ghost, 
um, this would be the front. So if you look at the front, that's called anterior. So this is the posterior division of the mandibular division, the back division of the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. And this nerve, so the inferior alveolar, uh, so inferior alveolar nerve, it innervates all the teeth. So it provides, like it supplies innervation. And innervation just essentially means it just like supplies nerves to all the teeth on the same side up to the midline. So that means this particular um, mandibular foramen, this one on this side, will supply nerves to all of these teeth here. And then this foramen on the other side will supply the nerves to all of these teeth here. So supply like nerves or veins or anything like that. So it always, it's like a 50-50 split. Each of them takes half. And it also carries in the inferior alveolar the artery and vein. Okay. Next, we have the lingual foramen. And that's just over here. So that's these little two like holes that you can see. It's not so clear on this diagram, but that's like roughly where they are. And the lingual foramen carries, um, it's found on the mandible, as we know. And it carries the arterial branches of the um, sublingual arteries. The arterial branches of the sublingual arteries. And these arterial branches come from the anastomosis. They come from anastomosis. And anastomosis just means cross-connection between vessels or channels of the sublingual arteries. So there's actually loads of sublingual arteries and the anastomosis so the cross connection between all of them so like a big jumble like where they all connect um that is where the arterial branch comes from so the arterial branch comes from the anastomosis of the sublingual arteries the big the big interconnection of the sublingual arteries is where the branch comes from okay next we have the inferior view and I know there's a lot of writing on here, but actually we've covered most of them when we looked at the superior view of the base. So we actually only have um, like six or seven to actually go through because we know most of them. So let's start with the incisive foramen. So we just saw the incisive foramen in the last video. And this is just where it comes through. Like you could just see it a little bit better here. So that's where the incisive foramen would be. Then you have the greater palatine foramen. This is the greater palatine foramen. It's above, so it's greater, because um, this one, the one next, the one below it is called the lesser palatine foramen. So this is the greater palatine foramen because it's above and it's also bigger. And then under it, you have like small, the small one, which is the, the lesser palatine foramen. Okay, so the late the greater palatine foramen is located um, on the palatine bone, and sometimes it's also called the pterygopalatine canal. So the greater palatine foramen, foramen is also called the pterygopalatine canal, and it's located on the palatine bone, and it actually represents the opening to the greater palatine canal. So. It carries the greater palatine artery and vein as well as the greater palatine nerve. So that's just here. Now, as we talked about before, the lesser palatine foramen is just below and it's smaller. And it's, it's located just below the greater palatine foramen on the palatine bone. And it represents the opening of the lesser palatine canal which is smaller, this is smaller than the greater palatine canal, and it carries the lesser palatine artery and vein, as well as the lesser palatine nerve. Next, we can see the foramen lacerum, which we saw already. So that's just where it comes out from the back. And then you can see the foramen ovale as well. So this is lacerum, the big one. Ovale is the smaller circle-shaped one. And um, the tiny one is the spinosum. So that's the spinosum right there. Okay, now, just under that, we have the, um, we have the groove. We have, it's called the groove for the auditory tubes. So the description is here. 
and this is denoted in red so you can see these lines here this is the groove it's right in between the foramen ovale and the foramen lacerum and these grooves are um it's a channel through which it's just a channel through which the tympanic cavity communicates with the nasopharynx so it's like a channel and the tympanic cavity can communicate with the nasopharynx so no nerve cell vessels actually go through the groove so the opening but it does transmit the cartilaginous part of the auditory tube so yeah so because the auditory tube is the channel it transmits the cartilaginous part of that channel okay Next, we can see the carotid canal. So the carotid canal is this green circle here. It's quite big. We've already talked about it. So that's what it looks like from the bottom. That's the carotid canal. And um, the carotid canal is right above. Sorry, it's right below. So carotid canal here. It's right below this structure here. And this is called the petrotympanic fissure this is the petrotympanic fissure these two and they're just above the carotid canals now the petrotympanic fissure is located on the temporal bone so all of this is the temporal bone in the middle here it's located on the temporal bone and it transmits the anterior tympanic artery and the chordotympany nerve so corda the, so the corda tympani nerve and um, it's just like a type of nerve okay next right under that so like like medially next to that medially means just more towards the midline so next to it but towards the midline we have the jugular foramen which we've already covered before so these this big hole is the jugular foramen or the jugular foramina and actually, inside the jugular foramina, we have these two little like structures, and these are these structures are called can caniculuses, caniculuses, and um, caniculuses are just kind of like another word for tiny, tiny openings. So the one at the top, the one above, is called the tympanic caniculus. And it's between the carotid canal and the jugular foramen. So we have the carotid canal here. We have the jugular foramen here. So it's kind of like in this area. It can also be a little bit higher up depending on um, variation. So sometimes it can be up here. It can be here. It can be in different places. And it's between the carotid canal and jugular foramen. And um, it contains the inferior tympanic artery. And the inferior tympanic artery is a branch of the ascending pharyngeal artery. Ascending means it goes up, so it goes higher up. So it's a branch of the ascending pharyngeal artery. And it also carries the Jacobson nerve, which is basically the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve. So the Jacobson, the, the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve is also called the Jacobson nerve. Just below the tympanic caniculus, you have the mastoid caniculus. You can remember that because it's more closer to the mastoid bone. So that's the mastoid process right there, not the mastoid. So the mastoid process of the temporal bone. And it's closer to the mastoid compared to the tympanic caniculus. So it's called the mastoid um, caniculus. It's also known as Arnold's canal. So sometimes it can be called Arnold's canal. And it contains the Arnold's nerve. And the Arnold's nerve is an auricular branch of the vagus nerve. So it's a part of the vagus nerve. It's the auricular branch. And then we've already seen the last three. What we have here is the condylar canal. So um, if I actually erase this, you'll be able to see it maybe a little bit better. So this is the condylar canal right there. But... It's quite like a large opening, so there's the condylar canal. And um, yeah, that's where that comes from. And then we've seen the mastoid foramen already. So this is the mastoid foramen on the inferior view of the skull. The mastoid foramen comes up from here 
is where it is on the back. And then if you look below, you can see that here. And then finally, we have the massive opening, the frame and magnum, which you can see as well over here. Okay, well, that's all on um, the the suture, not the suture, sorry. That's all on the landmarks of the skull. So that's all the foramina, fissures, canals and grooves. And yeah, that's all you kind of need to know. Thank you for listening. Hopefully you learned a lot from that. Thank you.